Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family, Heart's Own family, the Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. As always, guys, please do subscribe. They won't let us go past a certain spot in Evolutionary. They keep us popping back at 66.5 and 66.6. <laughs> it's one of their entertainment things they do. And they slowed eArts down to a crawl. They want to keep it from getting 20,000 subscribers. And they're slowing down Hearts Home as well. All to be expected because we keep exposing the system for what it is. But we are going to keep it all on the positive side. You know, I said to Cindy, well, you know, one interesting topic would be what belief systems would crumble and what belief systems would persevere when we have complete disclosure, which in case people missed it or not, we really have. Uh, it, it's kind of been out there for a while now. If we look closely, the power structure has said, you know, there's things out there that are simply not ours. We don't know what they are. We don't think they're China's. We don't think they're Russia's. Um, they're not ours. And then now we have another new person disclosing things saying, yeah, we've retrieved We're reverse engineering. Yeah, you know, these are definitively not ours. And some saying there's so many civilizations that we know are more advanced than ours here in the universe. So what what belief systems would be perfectly OK with the disclosure is that we're not alone in the universe, that there's many different beings that all the stars you see out there. Well, the vast majority have planets, and, and actually a good portion of those are, are literally inhabited by conscious, sentient beings. You know, and I just, on the on the thing that you have up, I had to do a little giggle because uh, Christianity is 33%. <laughs> of course, yeah, 33%. You know, again, and what, what age did Yeshua Jesus die? They say 33 what we got from the guides and from Yeshua uh, himself channeling is that he, he lived much longer okay. than that. And yeah, he had a long life. He had kids with uh, Mary and, you know, he ascended. He didn't actually even physically die in the traditional sense. He ascended. Think about that. That's a powerful message. If you're coming here and again, we've gotten that, why did Yeshua Jesus really come here? It was to basically alert everybody to the system. The same thing we're trying to do today. He, he was coming uh, in, in perhaps one of the darkest of the dark periods and trying to shed light and let humans know you're so much more than what they tell you you are. You have tremendous potential and power within you. Because again, Christianity that we have today and yes, there's tens of thousands of different branches when you get down to it. it. It has not, for the mainstream part of it, it was defined through a series of councils. And, and it's not the original teachings, especially when we talk about blood sacrifice, original sin, and, and those concepts, which are key concepts. Um, important concepts and I think this is just a, a, a fair legitimate conversation to have because especially with everything that's been going on as of late you know you kind of want to get a feel for the ground that you're treading on moving forward so you see Christianity is the the largest belief system in the world Islam is the second largest and then according to this pie non-religious agnostic atheist secular humanist is is the next largest and that might be growing very very fast it, you know from some surveys that's growing perhaps the fastest um, islam is growing a little faster than christianity at this point in time although you know there are forecasts out here that that show that christianity will still stay the dominant religion but what if disclosure comes out that's the biggie you know, when you look to the Latter-day Saints, uh, the Mormons, Joseph Smith, uh, who was himself, again, uh, rumored to be a 33rd degree Mason, you know, Cindy's been able to scan and read his energy, and, and he was what we would call a starseed. He was actually a, a being that if he was born today, oh, he could be very powerful in a really positive way. Uh, it was just that it was a little bit deeper into the depths of the you know dark times when when he came in 
And so he was waylaid, but the system does this. They take people, they take profits, they change the meanings, they change a little bit here and there. And, you know, we could look to Buddhism. Buddhism, you know, it, it, there's branches within Buddhism, as there are within Christianity, Islam, and, and other sects like Hinduism is is interesting because, you know, there's a, probably literally a million different belief sets different deities that it's been said that you know the the list of gods quote unquote in hinduism there is no end there is no end to it but it's understood that these beings are all different aspects of source and some of them are just simply more advanced beings that understand the way the universe multiverse works better than we do and they can teach us well no matter you know how big your soul is or who you are when you choose to come down and incarnate in earth as a human, you are going to be susceptible to weaknesses of the flesh. And there is going to be a veil put in front of you for you to grow. I mean, these are just some very common, basic rules, karmic rules of engaging being on earth as a human. So someone might be a very... Uh, powerful star seed but of course they're not going to know that and you just never know when you might be dealing with somebody who's come down to make a huge change like that absolutely and here you could see if we look at it this way it looks like christianity has conquered the globe as you can see you know the christian countries in that light blue islam in that pinkish salmon color and then we have different other belief systems. We can see how small they are. So the, the reality is, yeah, absolutely. Between Christianity, Islam, and then what we would call, you know, atheist, agnostic, or secular humanist, it's the vast majority. The vast majority of, of the population is, is ascribing, you know, to these but different belief systems. And this is giving you a forecast that in 2045, um, it's not going to be too much different, really. So this is what they're saying. But disclosure would change everything. Absolutely change everything. The realizing that so many of these prophets were really just advanced extraterrestrials, interdimensional beings that were trying to just simply point us in the right direction. Oh, that's going to change everything, is it not? When you look at basic, traditional, mainstream Christian beliefs, now the whole concept of the Trinity is not unique to Christianity. In fact, it's reflected all over the place in so many different ways. And even some things like baptism, you know, and, and divine healing, you know, that's, that's a God-given right to all of us. We all have the ability, whether you want to look at it in terms of uh, prana, ki, chi, vril, life force, or reiki, qi gong, uh, quantum touch, uh, you know, different forms of, of, of energy healing. You know, that's something that we find everywhere. Miracles happen. It doesn't matter. Miracles don't just happen to people in one dogma. No, no, of course not. And, of course, there's books that are taken as holy scriptures. And, you know, one of the key Christian concepts is that they are the actual word of God. Of course, then, you know, why are there so many revisions and translations that don't agree, which they don't? And then, you know, some people will defend them dogmatically, but, but you will, you know, if you look closely, you'll see, like, the oldest Gospel of John, there's hundreds, if not over a thousand, edits in the oldest copy we have. The key concepts of sin, original sin, eating the apple, whether, yeah, you say, okay, well, that was just symbolic. That was simply not obeying God. But who is this God becomes the real question. Do you, do you feel like we're in a fallen state as far as the creator of this universe? What we've gotten is, is the creator of this universe feels feels badly about the state of this particular planet, but it is a free will uh, universe, and it does go through the different yuga cycles. So the, the guides recognize the yuga cycles, and, and in fact, you know, what we've gotten from the guides is that no human belief system is 100% right. N none are 100% right, and that 
while we're in these bodies using these brains, you're never going to get it perfect. It's just an impossibility because, you know, the physicality limits our ability to conceive. It truly, truly does. And so we're never going to get it right. But they have said that the Sanatana Dharma, the uh, eternal wisdom that is, or the eternal path that is given in basic Hindu concepts, uh, which Buddhism comes out of uh, as well as uh, Jainism and to a degree Sikhism as well. Um, and there's other smaller ones as, as well. You know, some of those concepts are very accurate. And, you know, again, when you look at these different key Christian beliefs, Grace, okay, what's what do you what do you mean by grace? Well, you know, again, that's being absolved of your sins by having a belief system and promising never to do these bad things again. Of course, you know, we could promise till we're blue in the face and to until we really truly have a change of heart and perception, it it will not really take root and take seed. And of course we have all these allegories to that about you know, planting in different areas, planting on rock. Of course, it's not going to take root. You need fertile soil. You need to water it. And, you know, that is all uh, about the change of heart and how we view the universe, which is truly meant by being born again. And, you know, again, when you have faith in the teachings, well, well what about if I believe that the teachings, the original teachings were closer to Gnosticism? That's not the teachings that we have today with the fundamentalist uh, teachings. So we can see resurrection, judgment, destiny, second coming of Jesus, etc. You know, again, we've gotten from Yeshua. He's, he's not coming. He came. You know, he, he did his thing. He's not coming physically back again. And then you have people like uh, the wonderful Yogananda that wrote the second coming of Christ. And if you guys want to delve into uh, something uh, from a different perspective. You know, again, Yogananda took that as a, a second coming in the heart. It's all about the opening of the heart center. It's all about tapping into what we would call that cosmic Christ energies. And again, the christening is is much bigger than than dipping yourself in water, saying some words, and thinking you have the right dogma. It, it's truly about about opening up the heart center and and letting the love and compassion pouring f forth. One thing that's interesting is the Christian concept of resurrection of the physical bodies, which you don't really find anywhere else. Um, it's not common in, in other belief systems in judgment and destiny. Well, there are many different traditions that talk about judgment. And, you know, you have Ma'at in, in the ancient uh, Egyptian Book of the Dead, it, it's talked about weighing the heart against a feather, and you have all these different allegories in other systems as well. But but we see like some of the key concepts of, you know, shedding blood and original sin and all that. Would that still hold if we were not alone? And does that mean that he went to every one of those uh, quadrillions of godzillions of planets and and did the same thing you know one one thing that i really enjoyed learning from these teachers is how important belief systems are to the structure that we live in and if you look at the belief system and the world that we live in and you take atheists what they believe in is something like very scientific, like quantum physics. When you take someone who's of a religious nature, what they do is they believe in prayer. When you have people that are spiritualists, they believe in manifestation. Say if, if somebody is a witch, they believe in spells. But ultimately, across the board, you can guarantee and understand we're all manipulating the same thing. It's all the same thing. What lens do you view it through? Now, if that were to be suddenly the main teaching, 
how would things change? How would things change? Maybe people would feel more free to step into another belief system, but consciousness is something that's unseen but tangible. And how can that be? And I know that there's a lot of people who really want to try super hard to harness that consciousness, but the harder you try to harness it, the more it's going to flee from you. <laughs> so it is definitely something that is a divine mystery. When we look over here, and, and again, these are not the be all end all as far as, you know, slideshows for different beliefs. Of course, there's many different groups in, in Christianity and, and, you know, there are Sunni and Shia uh, Muslims as well. And, you know, there is one God, and his name is Allah, according to Islam, and the Holy Bible of Islam is called the Quran, or the Quran. They do pray typically five times a day to Allah. Their holy place is called a mosque. When they pass, they live either a future life of glory or hell. During a certain time during the fall, they fast, or two days is called Ramadan, or there's a month period. So you, you find a lot of disagreement and just plain out errors when you look at even slides trying to give you um, these these belief sets. But again, uh, w immediately what I think of is when they say there's one God in his name is, you know, again, God is not necessarily, well, God can't be li limited in, in the sense of if we are referring to the all. And so this is where, you know, the word God is just, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work because it's meant too many different things to too many different people. And, you know, it's it's interesting to really see it because when you talk to people maybe of a fund fundamentalist mindset and this is all they have known, all they have known their entire life, and they'll say to you, well, well, isn't God God? <laughs> you know, because this is all they know. And, and you know, that's Jesus' father, right? And they don't really know much else. When we, when we look at it, think back to the TikTok mentality that we have. You know, everything is sort of like rush, rush. And sure, there's theology schools and you could study theology. Um you know, and and learn all the answers that they're going to give you for these questions that don't really have any answers because it, it's an incomplete belief set. It, it, it's a belief set that ultimately leads you on to a dead end. And, you know, again, this this is part of the question. The original question was, you know, again, can't we all have our own belief sets? And isn't that just fine if we all believe our own thing? And yes, but when certain belief systems have been utilized to uh, wipe out other people of different belief systems, then isn't supporting that supporting evil? Because again, when we when we look back to you know the charts, and here's primal indigenous, which at one point was all the world. <laughs> you know, you didn't have Christianity and Islam if we go back 2000 years. And so, you know, all the world was really primal indigenous. In fact, um, the world was mostly what we would call animist in, in that animism is the belief that all things have spirit or soul. They have an eternal part, whether that's animals, plants, rivers, mountains, stars, the moon, the sun, each being is considered a spirit that can offer help or harm to humans. And again, you know, this this will equate to what people think of in the Christian era as pagan or, or heathen beliefs, which have been wiped out. So what, what the animists understand is that everything is ultimately consciousness. And that is also what we get from, from Hinduism, too. Uh, all forms of animal life possess souls and not just animals too but you know plant life does too everything is is alive everything is is it possesses consciousness in the sense that if you want to say what is life is life not consciousness and then that gets you to the big question so is, is ai alive but we will do that in another one yeah that for sure so you have dharma duties 
uh, karma, good, bad deeds cause, you know, you know, certain energy will attract like energy. If you're putting out a lot of love, it, it should cause a lot of positivity. If we're putting out a lot of fear, it's going to cause a retraction in your energy field and tend to bring in a lot of, of dark energies. And samsara is, is the wheel of death and rebirth, moksha's liberation, and you know the unity of the Atman, which is the individual uh, soul with the universal soul, Brahman, and not not Brahman as in Brahma, Shiva, and Vishnu, but Brahman as in the totality. So when we look back at the major beliefs of Islam, there is one God, and his name is Allah. I I immediately think of of, of Taoism and. You know, Taoism is something that I think does go along very well with much of the animist points of view, the Hindu points of view, um, you know, Buddhist, Jain points of view, many different systems. Um, And, you know, again, it's not really religious. You could say it's more of a philosophy, a way of viewing things. And in in Taoism, one of the key tenets is that, you know, again, Tao, when we look at the Tao, you're looking at the yin and the yang, and you see a little yang in the yin and the yin in the yang. And one of the key beliefs is that the the ultimate uh, reality of, of the Tao is that which can be named is not the Tao. So if you want to refer that to source, anytime you name something and you can't give something a name and that name is suitable, it's not the all. It's just that simple. It can't be the all. So again, I think what what Christians take as God, really we need to be defining it a little bit better. And the same thing with, with Muslims as well or anybody that is falling into that monotheistic point of view. Do you mean source? Do you mean the creator of this universe, which may not be, and what we have gotten from the guides is not the creator of some other universes, that there's actually beings of such a large scope of such a incredible understanding that these beings create universes, and there's many of them out there. You know, I think it lies somewhere in almost every being in an individual basis the desire to feel like they have to have a belief and for for me for a long time going through all these different belief systems and wanting to dedicate my self and my time to something that was bigger than myself that was very important I just wanted to be part of something bigger than me I I needed that I felt like I needed that so I went through and I did a lot of studying and I did a lot of understanding and with every single ism that I studied I realized well there's just something in that that I don't agree with so I guess this is not my thing wholeheartedly and after many years of that I finally came to the realization well, what, what is wrong with what I believe after looking at all these systems, after all the trials and tribulations I've been through in my life, after all the things that I've seen and still see, you know, a- am I going to try to put myself in one of these boxes belief systems? And I, I couldn't. I couldn't, you know, but I wanted to. And because I, I think that's just a, a human Thing. We know that there is something much bigger than just us and we want to expand into that and this is the journey that we take here on this planet and I believe people should walk these journeys as an individual and be open every step of the way and just really appreciate each and every culture when it is adding beauty to someone's life when it is adding substance to someone's being these things are the things that i think should be appreciated but you don't have to take it on you know if you're someone who is searching keep in mind you want to search for yourself you want to search for who you are ultimately with spirituality it is the search of self 
Absolutely. So when we look at, you know, the Taoist belief sets, when we look to the term wuji, wuji is the void. Wuji is is that which is not. So in so many ways we could equate wuji um, in some ways to the some thoughts of Shiva as being that which is not. When we're looking at Shiva as Shiva Shakti, but then we have the yang and the yin, the masculine and the feminine polarities that come together and give us the existent manifest universe. And again, it's as if Shiva paints the existence on Shakti, and Shakti is the mother of all, all, all forms of incarnation. And it's not just 3D, not just 3D. And again, this is where, um, you know, again, it, I, I guess if we had to give percentages, I would say, yeah, a lot of my belief system is Taoist to a degree, but I also agree quite a bit with Gnosticism, but not entirely. And I also agree with many of the Hindu beliefs, but not completely and not entirely, and they're not even close to uniform. They are so expansive and diverse, again. Uh, so, you know, and, and the guides have said none of them have it all, and, y and you're not going to have it all, because the whole point of this existence is discovery. So if you knew it all, you would have no point in coming in. I know. If you know all the answers, you know, why bother to take the test? It, it's just kind of pointless so we do come in with this veil it's a deliberate veil so we have the opportunity to discover something new about ourselves each and every time we do this and this is where we grow so the yin and the yang the masculine and the feminine the opposite polarities you have the five elements the five elements are found in different forms in in almost every tradition really when you get down to it and, you know, in the West, we have the four elements, plus we have the either or the spirit or the Akash. Wu Wei is effortless action, right? So many of you have heard of Feng Shui, right? And, you know, putting things into the right spots. Wu Wei is, is key when it comes to Taoist beliefs. If we find ourselves always going upstream, then we're missing something. We're always missing something. If we're going upstream, if everything is fighting against us, we need to sit still and ask, why is this? Because everything that we should be striving for is flowing with the natural flow. And this system <laughs> is, is, is all about taking the natural flow of things, twisting and distorting. And they have, unfortunately. But when we're out of this system, if we can find the way of Wu Wei, that, that, that way of the natural flow, we get into the stream, the stream carries us. We go from one good thing to another good thing. And that doesn't mean we can't have uh, episodes of, of tough times where we're you know, trying to discover something that maybe it's taken us many lifetimes to discover. But if you're finding that you're not getting that effortless manifestation and well you know we could take our situation we in some ways we manifested this you could look at this new place as being an effortless manifestation and the reality is i jumped on it so fast because i knew it had the potential to be what we wanted and at the same time i knew oh my god we're gonna have to do everything from scratch because we're not rich and in fact you know this house is like a fourth of, and probably a, a fifth or a sixth of the average sales price across the country. So, and that, you know, being with four acres, it's really all about the land. So in some ways you could say it's effortless because I just went with the flow and when it came up, we jumped straight on top of it because of previous, um, you know, things going before we got to them. And that's where we look at it like, okay, when we say we want to put a bid in on a house, well, sorry, it's already under contract, and that happened to us like three or four times. Instead of, you know, getting frustrated and irritated, we just kind of look at like, okay, well, something's coming. We know something's coming. We feel, we sense into it. We feel we're in the right area. This does feel right. So something will manifest, and and we just go that way with the flow. But if if it continued, then we would probably say, Maybe we should be looking elsewhere and we let the universe put out in front of our eyes something that would point us in a different direction. Now, it could be somebody out of the blue we haven't talked to in years. 
saying, oh, did you guys move to Kansas? Or whatever, you know. And, oh, well, maybe maybe there's something to the Kansas thing, you know. And you just you just sit with things and, and you see, you, you let things develop. This is part of, of the Taoist belief system and finding that natural order, the natural way of things. Instead of forcing ourselves to jam uh, square pegs into round holes. You know, and this makes me think of always thinking of planets and how to fit them into something. But Mars, our Mars energy that we come down here with. And that's the energy of manifestation. So we come down here and we're very young souls and we want things to happen. So we go forth and we try to force things to happen and we try to control things and have things put in, you know, in place for us. But really, in reality, what we're doing is we're going to have to learn to change our insides to match our outsides. So it's about going within and to stop that external struggle because it's not up to the world and it's not up to the universe to make changes to suit our needs. Sometimes we have to look at situations and we have to tinker around and change what's on the inside to help suit our needs but that that takes some doing absolutely and when you look at this this article this is all about convincing you that the bible is is the only way you know because it says in comparison with biblical christianity animism is a false belief in gods that are not truly gods at all isaiah teaches and first peter teaches so you know again using the bible as being uh, the only truth and you know again there's we you know we could we could and we have uh, probably spent hundreds of hours going into that you know what you have to just basically say is is, is it a belief system that is all based on fear and punishment or is it a belief system based on love is this belief system flexible what happens when extraterrestrials come and they really and there really are extraterrestrials we've never been alone you know, and Hinduism, as we were saying, uh, one of the key texts in Hinduism points out there's there's hundreds of thousands of humanoid species, and it's also known somehow the, the expanse and the shape of the Milky Way galaxy. That's pretty amazing knowledge, but you know, there's a lot of knowledge that here is given to us from beings that are extraterrestrial in the first place so this, they've shared knowledge with us and yeah these these beings are are not the source of everything as no single individual being is the source of all things the source is everything everything and so you know when you look again back to those animist beliefs yeah th these are all the people that were persecuted uh, in the expansion of, of the main belief systems on the planet. And, and they were eradicated. They, they also knew about the fact of different dimensions and densities. So when it comes to that revelation, again, of, of different beings and some beings that can manifest and unmanifest in front of our very eyes because they understand how to increase or decrease their frequency interdimensionally, you know that's mind blowing, but when you get down to uh, these indigenous belief systems, they totally understand that because they encountered them. They encountered them firsthand. This again is some of the knowledge that that comes down uh, throughout the ages, as we were saying. When we go into this age, which we're just getting our feet into. This Bronze Age, by the time we're starting to get our feet into the Silver Age, we're interacting with so many different beings out in the open. They're coming and going openly. You know, it's just a given. And we know this is a gigantic universe loaded with intelligent life. And in fact, m most of it out there is, is not malevolent. Qu contrary to what we're being sold by the controlling belief sets, it's not malevolent. Uh, the malevolent ones, unfortunately, are the ones that have been in control of this of this planet the past few thousand years. And, you know, so many important angelic beings that are out there that are here to help us 
might not be the ones who are able to speak and say words. So a lot of these beings have come here to this planet to help us in other ways and keeping our minds and our hearts open to different ideas is really, I think it's it's a good way to go. I mean, that's the way I went. I definitely went through um, my belief systems and I did my best to respect each and every one and I found my place now and I could not have found my place without meeting all kinds of different people having all kinds of different realizations you know down to the love and enjoyment of um, my pets and even just the love and enjoyment and appreciation of you know flowers in the desert and looking at them and understanding the beauty in which they 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 bring to such a barren desert you know the desert was a place i went to and had a really hard time finding the beauty but then in the end i simply wasn't looking hard enough you just need to look so you know when you look to some in here in the west with a little say they are pagan or they'll say wiccan or use different terms again you know this 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 is again tapping into a more animist point of view and again it 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 doesn't it's not very different truly from from hinduism uh, again and that was one of my original studies is looking at the pagan path the wiccan path path now again every single belief system on this planet once it becomes codified put together uh, there will be distortions that make their way into it and the control system anything that gets too big you know the control system will try to get a get a hold of and bring you back into some form of usability to that you know aforementioned control system this one you see 13 goals of a pantheist pagan know yourself that's a good idea know your path that's a great idea learn and grow nothing wrong there apply knowledge and wisdom achieve balance keep your words in good order keep your thoughts in good order celebrate life attunement with the cycles of the earth that's something that you see with uh, all the indigenous traditions they're always keeping in, in tune with the cycles and it's not just about knowing when to plant when to harvest it's also about knowing when the yugas change. This is one of the key things that I don't see anybody out there talking about. When we're looking at um, Poverty Point, when we're looking at Stonehenge, when we're looking at all these great sites where key astrological alignments are in place, part of what they're trying to tell us is when the yugas change, when humanity is imprisoned and when humanity is free again. And that is so key. Breathe and eat correctly. Exercise the body. Meditate. Honor nature. I, I don't see anything wrong with any of those. No, I don't see any any fear being bantered about. I don't see any angst. I don't see anything that, you know, I mean, this could apply to each and every person. It, it's just simply has a different label on it that some people might not appreciate. But one thing, and I'll say how they do control this, is there is a saying that all gods are one god, all goddesses are one goddess. And so, you know, you, you might feel an affinity towards one or another. That's good, but, but really know the energies because some of these gods are those that we would call the Anunnaki, and some of these are gods that are, you know, again, all these gods are just beings. They are beings. You know, these are beings. Uh, again, they have a better understanding of the universe and spirituality and, and how things work than we do. But they're not all on the same page. And some of them are some that came in and oppressed humanity. And some of them are those that lifted up humanity. So when we're looking at Isis, Aset, she is different, and, and Osiris, Osir, they are different than, say, Enlil, Enki, uh, Inanna, Astarte. These are not all the exact same beings, yeah, and, and it's understanding that because this is part of their next ploy, is, is to introduce to you some of the controllers uh, out there in the open let let you know these are advanced beings you know these are some of your myths and legends right here and people will be like wow and some people might even think ah 
there's your antichrists right there. You know, the the ones that are going to be godlike and have amazing powers. You know, this is part of the next <laughs> stage uh, in the show that we are uncovering. But recognize they're not all the same. So when we see beings like, you know, Lakshmi and Vishnu and Ganesha, uh, that definitely does not equate to Marduk and Lilaninki. They all have a different vibe. Always good to sit and get to know your those beings that you might look up to. Absolutely. So we look forward to your questions and comments, and we know we covered a ton. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, please do put out other topics that we will discuss here openly as you know this is your forum let us know what you want to cover and what you want to go in deeper to source bless and namaste namaste